Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. And I'm Ramp Scott. Awesome. Well, we have a great show for you guys. Uh, that was Josh Cook on the piano. Uh, things are warming up out there, and there's some good news some some bad news, uh, and all around just news in general, so we got a lot about that. We don't have any new programs this week to show you, but it doesn't mean we don't have any new programs that are airing on MCAT tonight and tomorrow night, so you can check that out at MCAT.org. But I do have dubbing stuff, and I got another uh, surprise of highlights from last Saturday's Dude I Just Drew. Let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. If we look at it right now, it's 25 degrees, so we're still kind of in those lo winter low temperatures, but we're still getting into the 50 degree temperatures, and it's only going to get hotter, but we might have a cold spell. There's always like one or two cold spells in the springtime. It just feels that way, but for now, we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, 50 degree temperatures with sunny, clear skies. There's a uh, freezing fog, then it's going to be sunny, but I, I woke up this morning, I went outside, it's like... Definitely no fog, so I don't know what you're talking about, nationalweatherservice.gov. Um, so <laughs> Friday, mostly sunny with a high of 56. So the highest is going to be on Thursday. So Thursday might be the day for uh, anybody getting out of school a little bit earlier for early out to enjoy some sunshine because it's the perfect sweater weather because we wear sweaters during the winter anyways. So it's a good time to actually be out and about without freezing your butt off. Oh, hey, and that says tonight's supposed to be clear. Yep. Sweet. I'm going to look. Up. Right. I'm gonna see the moon. Let's see. Like maybe I might even get a chance to uh, take the drone out and um, take it out. As you saw, oh, yeah. I got some sweet drone footage this morning. Um, as the days become a little bit uh, brighter and earlier in the morning, we'll be able to see a, a better sunrise. But that was just a little taste of uh, the drone here at MCAT. So we'll be uh, getting some more footage as well. So I'm excited to uh, uh, dust off the drone because we just got it last. Uh, we got it basically last uh, late spring, early summer. We used it for our summer camps, uh, zombie camp, time travelers camp, so we got some aerial shots of Fort Missoula, so it's nice. some cool stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so here's the big thing that's happening here in Missoula. Shopco is done, son, and <laughs> Missoula will be closing their stores along with many other Montana stores. Um, the Wisconsin-based company um, based out of Green Bay, Go Packers, filed for bankruptcy in January, citing uh, executive debt and ongoing competitive pressures and began announcing store closures. The company closed several stores in Montana in February, and remaining stores in Kalispell, Helena, Libby, Shelby, Livingston, and Missoula will now be shut down. When, exac uh, when exactly? Uh, June 14th, apparently, and 60 people will lose their job uh, based on uh, the reports in the Missoulian, um, Shopco opened in Missoula in 1962 uh, and was one of the first retail retailers in Missoula. Shop Shopco is a Wisconsin-based chain uh, with about 5,000 employees nationwide in 120 stores. The company's statement to the Associated Press on Monday indicated the store will be liquidating their inventory over the course of 10 to 12 weeks. So I guess shopping at Shopco would probably be uh, smart for a lot of people doing a clearance sale. You know, it was Hastings last year, wasn't it? Uh-huh, yeah. Well, I think that, no, that was over, that was like two years ago. Wow, it's crazy to think yeah, about. time flies by. It really crazy. does. Yeah, especially like at, when you're done with school, because school is the one thing that really makes time go really slow. Yeah, Hastings was an unfortunate loss. Yeah, it was. They had a lot of cool stuff, bookstore, games, and all sorts of cool things that they had as there. But in. that's just... Uh, it's a competitive market, and when you live in a capitalistic society, you have to deal with the fact that things will fail. And moving on to the next topic, um, I'm sure you heard of the trooper who got shot um, last Friday. Uh, it was an extreme emotion day for law enforcement in the state of Montana when one of the very own Montana Highway Patrolmen was shot in the line of duty. Trooper Wade Palmer was transported to Missoula's St. Pat's and then motorcade brought him to the airport to be flown to Salt Lake City, where Utah police also had a police motorcade to their hospital. Although there has been no update to the Trooper Palmer's condition in Salt Lake City, there has been an overwhelming amount of love and support for the Trooper's recovery, not only in the state of Montana, but nationwide. In the state news, uh, Helena has broke ground on their new high school. So East uh, Helena uh, voters approved a $29.5 million 20-year bond to build a new high school in May of 2018. This goes in um, conjunction with the, uh, the Montana state law that allowed smaller districts to ask for a vote to basically uh, consolidate money to build a high school. And this was in part a couple of years ago when um, Hellgate Elementary, because it's a different district, Hel Hellgate Elementary wants to build a high school. Um, they're in the process of asking for money. So a lot of this is going to be like the district 
It's not necessarily like a, a county or a uh, city type deal. You have to be within the district. So a lot of the people within the East Helena voted to approve it and uh, their taxes are gonna definitely go up. So here are some of the numbers. Um, last, uh, last I heard, this would cost $25 per household in the area, but um, the final approximate figures are totaling an increase of 21.59 mills, or about $29.13 uh, $29 per year on a $100,000 home and $58.26 per year on a $200,000 home in East Helena. National news, floods, floods, and more floods. Many uh, communities in Nebraska and the surrounding areas in the Midwest are dealing with floods. Uh, 70, 74 cities, 64 uh, counties, and four tribal areas have declared a state of emergency in Nebraska, according to the Nebraska Emergency Management Agency. Iowa, as, long as, uh, as well as part of Kansas, Missouri, South Dakota, and Wisconsin, floods are ravaging farms and swa um, swamping homes. At least four people have been killed and hundreds of others have been displaced. 41 of Iowa's 99 counties are included in the state disaster declaration. Among the areas hardest hit in the, is the agricultural business. Nebraska is leading industry with the state's Department of Agriculture reporting up to $1 billion in expected damages to farms and livestock. Waters are receding, as, of course, but, it, but the damage has already been done in many places such as Nebraska along the Missouri River will see rising waters. So yeah, those are some of the uh, news things that are happening. Um, here is the kind of a little taste of Dude I Just Drew, episode eight, where we invited, um, you know, because Missoula's like, this is like a, a, a small town, because yeah. you knew the guy who uh -huh. was there. Went to high school with him. Yeah, and um, Graham, he and they're uh, Discord friends, um, yeah. and they, he invited him to come on down. He's a fan of the um, Dude I Just Drew show, so if you're a fan, and if you are an artist here in Missoula, and you want to show off your drawing skills, you can, um, like uh, Dude I Just Drew on Facebook and follow along. So without further ado, here is a little taste of episode eight. Hello everybody, it is another great episode of Dude I Just Drew introducing a fan, Lauren, yeah. last name unknown. <laughs> Five minutes, five rounds. Okay. <laughs> I'm out of it right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get, I guess, let's get to it. May the best artist win. Also, we'll be name, drawing names out of hats, and um, these, these people back here will vote, or whatever. Samurai with a five foot long sub sandwich as a sword. Scott. <laughs> nice. It is very specific. It's pretty creative. Very specific. Very, I'm a very big cool. Sub subway guy. Subway. Yes. Eat. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. It's like a shotgun. Already immediately getting roasted. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm roasting you because mine's not going to be any better. <laughs> mine's going to be like a steak figure holding like just this big rod of a Subway sandwich. Is that even going to be that? <laughs> It kind of looks oh, like one of sure. like a Mega Man villain. It does. It, no, it looks <laughs> like no. It kind of reminds me of like a One, one Punch Man ones, one superhero, power, like a One Punch Man the superhero. Power Mega Man to like jump really high. But yeah. Only like twice as high as normal jump. Is he eating the sandwich? <laughs> That's a good question. Is he like stuffing it's up it to the his interpreter mask? Uh, of what he's doing? Oh. It's actually just a bunch of lines. A dog is normal sized, but all the other dogs are big instead. What? <laughs> okay. Clover. Why is Clifford normal sized? Yeah, you go. You go first. Because Clifford's been big for far too long. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. What is that? Why? Why is he scary? Why is it scary on the other side? A knight, a Spartan, and an eagle. That's that like a very hyper localized. If you really think There's about like, it. oh. <laughs> yeah, so okay, let's, let's have a little background. Why, why, what are those connected to? Those are connected to our high schools. Kind of looks like a, um, a mosquito. Okay, yeah. Or actually has a glazed look in its eyes. Like, oh. oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you read it out loud, please? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I know this one pretty well. Uh, moving, grooving, bouncing, singing, gummy bear. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Oh, Put in the no. And that'll be the highlight of my piece right there. Also, this guy is very creepy. It's like yummy. 
<laughs> I don't know it's if that's just too... Just it's yummy. <laughs> yummy. It's really deep. I can't remember. It's like uh, God of the Chance of Meatballs or whatever. My spelling is awful, so I can't tell whether I'm writing that right. He's dropping like, it. He's dropping his stuff down on yeah, good taste. <laughs> oh, yeah, the eyes are what do it. The for eyes are selling it, dude. For it kind of has some big muscles. Too. It's, it's just muck. Put little, like... Or what it, also, what put little, like, foresty trees. Forest ring shape, and then you used pie to find the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's very broad. It's yeah. very broad. You can make it literally anything. Literally anything. It's a good. It's How a good I one. I thought of it was like you know, a pine and a forest on the pine. Wow. Oh, okay. That is some good. That is some good, oh, good stuff. I switched again. Uh, it's not bad. I guess maybe it's because there's like no people in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. Okay, okay. Never sell yourself well, short. I'm never always be, always be. This show has 100%. inspired me to go do things. Yes. yes. Cool. Awesome. All right, everybody. This is a great episode. We had a lot of fun. We we actually stayed on topic. And for yeah. yeah. Um, thanks for having have being being on the show. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. We flip oh, a coin boy. to see who goes first. <laughs> <laughs> we get, we uh, flip a coin to see who goes first, and then, then we I think I said that. I said I said that like in combination of the Five drawing. Rounds. Five rounds. All right, hey guys, welcome back. Um, now let's talk about some city uh, council stuff. It is time for my city council report. Uh, so summer, so it is. Um, Celebrate Islam Week coming up in April 8th through the 12th, uh, and someone from the community came down during the uh, public comment section of the meeting, um, and he, sp I didn't know his, I, I honestly uh, did not get his name. I watched the meeting, and I, uh, I found out that there was no audio for like the first eight minutes of the meeting, and then as he was talking, the volume went up. So anyways, I just want you guys to know that um, there is Celebrate um, um, Islam Week, so here is a little bit of that. The group that I'm a, a part of has been putting on a Celebrate Islam Week um, to encourage a positive reflection um, of the religion of Islam and the adherence to the faith, um, including the Muslims who live here in Missoula. Uh, many of those are uh, refugees. Um, I'm also uh, integrated into the refugee community. I speak to um, Arabic-speaking and, and Muslim refugees a lot, and they have always said Missoula has been nothing but the most welcoming place they've they've ever been short of um, the homes that they left. Um, nobody has ever been uh, ridiculed because of the hijab they're wearing. Nobody's ever um, been spoken to in a threatening way. Um, and because Missoula is so welcoming, I, I, feel, I feel good coming before you and, and asking um, that you come out and show positive support um, for the Muslims who live in our community. Um, and. Uh, coming to some of the events that uh, we have planned for uh, Celebrate Islam Week, which is going to be April 8th through the 12th. Um, All right, so uh, some of the events uh, that are going to be um, during Celebrate um, Islam Week is at softlandingmissoula.org. They posted a, a sheet. I'm just going to kind of read it off there. You have a kickoff banquet starting on Monday the 9th, and it starts around 5.30 to 7, and it's... Uh, part of the, let's see, it doesn't necessarily, where is it? Uh, oh, it's the First Presbyterian Church, and it's going to start uh, from 5.30 to go to 7.30. They have a workshop, which is Practical Spirituality in Islam, so you get to learn a little bit more about it, and that's on Tuesday um, from noon to 3.30. This is a uh, UM Congregational Church, so they're going to be bouncing around a bunch, many of the uh, churches here in Missoula. Har Shalom, um, the Jewish uh, um, temple here in Missoula, has been a, a lot of, a big supporter of um, this uh, Islam, celebrate Islam week as well. Um, and let's see, uh, there's just a lot of different events and here are just kind of like a list of stuff, you know, also on Tuesday is Islam and getting into the heart of interfaith, uh, Quran by heart, film screening, which will be on Wednesday, and then Saturday, Dance of Universal Peace and Decur. Sorry, I totally butchered those names, but I'm trying my darndest. Um, all right, so those are just some of those events. Softlandingmissoula.org uh, has that information, but you can always look up Celebrate Islam Week Missoula by Googling it. All right, let's move on. So more public comment. Andy Hossel, um, she uh, is fed up with the trash that's getting blown from the city dump to the city of Missoula, and this is what she had to say. Well, this city doesn't even ask and require its residents to recycle. So I have little faith in our ability um, to then move to the next 
absolutely necessary step, which is to ban plastic uh, use in this city, starting with plastic bags. The plastic bags that you go to get at the grocery store are terrible anyway. They don't actually work. They rip immediately and then just go to the trash. Yep. All right, so uh, that was a uh, public comment on there. Uh, she went on to continue that uh, many things have to be done and that the city should uh, pass an ordinance that would basically uh, charge people um, to do the – but th this is during public comment. And the one the one place that I did notice that really has a, a big recycling um, – deal going on in Seattle, because when I was in Seattle, they had a different bins for different recycling, and if you didn't fall adhere by those rules, you'd get a fine based on a lot of, like, uh, county ordinance that they have, like, in King County. So that's an interesting thing that uh, the city could do, and would also help fund um, future recycling projects as well, but then again, it has to be voted on, and it's something that's way, way, way um, too early to talk about development, and of course, you know, cities uh, plan to uh, a zero by 50, so 2050, um, you know, there's uh, a, what's that called, quality supply, or the place that's off of uh, Russell Street, I, I'm just blanking on it because I'm just kind of talking out of my butt right now. No, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the, the place that takes a lot of old recycled material and whatnot, I know, I'm, uh, you probably are yeah. yelling right now, but, you know, quality supply, no. That sounds really no, no, that sounds like a business. Wait, recycling? Yeah, yeah. They take your... Uh, um, Pacific? No, no, no. Recycling? No, like, yeah, Pacific and, of course, uh, like, uh, Republic Services are the two only places in Missoula that are uh, recycling. But then there's the nonprofit that's off of uh, Russell Street right next to Mud. Huh. Yeah, that area, that, that takes a lot of old lumber and old stuff like that. I'll probably think about it later, but for right now, that's just kind of like some of the places you can go to as well. But... Um, anyways, um, let's talk about some other things. Th this whole meeting kind of bounces all over the place, so it's kind of hard to segue into a whole other segment. So we're going to jump right into Andrea Davis, who is the executive director of Homeward, and she's talking about affordable housing and uh, just a little a bit of more information on that as well. I just wanted to speak briefly to this uh, consent agenda item, which is for our Montana Street Homes project and the request that we've made to the city for um, an additional $5,350. Uh, $5,350. And um, I wanted to emphasize something that is uh, relative not only to a project update, but also because you're going to be seeing the housing policy coming forward from the um, Housing and Community Development Office here shortly. And it's that we have six small homes at this property. And normally a $5,000 overage like this would be something that would be easily absorbed into one of our larger multifamily projects, especially something like Sweetgrass Commons that was, you know, a, an $8 million project. In this case, however, this $5,000 would get passed along to the homeowners because developing single-family homes that for sale that are um, for people that are earning 80% and below area median income, they are extremely thin, as you can imagine. And we can go through some of the project details later when it says not public comment on the consent agenda. But I wanted just to see the conversation that you'll be having on the housing policy coming up here shortly and um, mention that the ability for us to um, be able to recoup this $5,000 will then afford Homeward the ability to not pass along those costs to the homeowner and or for Homeward to eat those costs, which, you know, as an uh, organization that wants to continue to do this work, it helps us be able to continue to pay our staff to be able to do that. So it's All right, so that was Andrea Davis, the executive director of uh, Homeward. And, yeah, it, it just makes sense. You know, like as housing goes up, even affordable housing goes up as well. And a lot of times Homeward's goal is to try to have affordable housing for people who fall under that 80 percent um, income, uh, medium, and whatnot. And so the idea is to uh, just like kind of offset some of the costs because a lot of times there's always like pay plans and stuff and deals and whatnot. But again, it's just another bill to pay. So that's just help, having it less to uh, incur some of those costs. So um, the 2018 Making Missoula Home Report for the uh, Missoula Organization of Realtors states that over 30% of households in Missoula County in 2017 were cost burdened by their housing costs and rent and housing prices have gone up since 2017. Nearly 70% of renters are paying more of their income than they can afford for rent and utilities, leaving them without a, enough money uh, remaining income to cover other basic expenses. How's renting? Um, <clears throat> uh, 
so far it's been okay. I live in a two bedroom apartment with three of us living there. So I share a room with a friend, which is okay. And one of our roommates is a total deadbeat. So that's how wow. everything is going. Let, let's like throw in shade right live on television. Uh, yeah. I, okay. I throw shade anywhere, man. Right? Uh, but no, rent, renting is okay. I'm looking at renting a new house pretty soon. But like at my age, you pretty much have to have roommates yeah. uh, to yeah. afford anything. Because my budget is like in the negatives. Yeah. I mean, for me, like, I mean, like, just a little glimpse into my own life, like, I rented by myself, um, and it was tough. Yeah. It was a tough experience. Yeah, same but, complex, but also, um, it's also, like, kind of made me, like, uh, become a little more independent in a way. I don't know. It's, it's weird because I definitely pay a lot more now that I have my own home um, than I ever did when I rented. But yeah. it's, it's very interesting to just kind of see the dynamics. So, I don't know. I might be renting my room someday soon. I don't know. Uh, I'm definitely looking for, like, an extremely part-time um, floating roommate that I don't need to worry about them just kind of, like, nesting. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> let's switch gears. Right. That's just a glimpse of it into my own personality <laughs> and my yeah. own prejudices. Um, Mayor John Ingen uh, read a proclamation, and this, uh, and this is what he had to say. Ladies and gentlemen, whereas the month of March is Women's History Month, which celebrates the significant contributions of women of all races, ethnicities, and backgrounds, uh, and the contributions they've made to the world, and whereas women play a critical role in the vitality and diversity of our communities and are essential to ensuring Montana is well represented, and whereas while the 20th, 20th century was a pivotal, 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 time of growth for women entering politics, women remain underrepresented in male-dominated fields and thus providing opportunities to support women in public office is imperative. And whereas recognizing women in public office will bring awareness to the fundamental necessity of their work and will inspire other young people to serve their communities, now therefore be it resolved by the mayor of the city of Missoula and the Missoula City Council that March 19th, 2019, hereby be proclaimed Celebrating Women in Public Office Day. And we call upon the people of Missoula and Montana to unite as we support the success of women in public office and observe every March 19th with appropriate activities, events, and programs, like a city council meeting <laughs> on the eve, right? Uh, we are lucky to be well served on this body by women and uh, hope to have more. All right. So uh, and the majority of the city council members are female. And oops. It's okay. Like this is like because I'm always going back and forth with the videos. I just kind of I, yeah, I just have yeah. to keep the mics hot because no, I, I can't just I, like I reach over. That and I totally yep. should bite my tongue yep. while that's happening. Oh, also, I just want to also mention that it was also Public Transit Operator Appreciation Day on um, March 18th. So give your bus driver a hug and accept them kicking you off for hugging them without consent. Uh, here's Bill from uh, Mountain Lion talking a little bit more and a, co and a couple stories about how Mountain Lion has uh, gave back to the community. Um, you know, frequently, uh, not that many people think about it, but they're on the road every single day uh, of the year, regardless of the conditions. Um, they frequently go above and beyond the call of duty, as they did this winter in, in aiding uh, our housing crisis, um, and also um, just with their passengers. Um, just in the last couple weeks, I can think of two amazing stories. One, we had a very young woman who was suffering a health emergency. Um, she was uh, scared. Uh, you know, understandably very frightened. Um, one of our operators uh, safely, uh, you know, managed to park the bus uh, and stayed with her, kept her calm uh, while emergency responders were, were, were coming to her aid. Uh, and she was so thankful to just have that kind, friendly face there um, to help her in such a dire time. Um, in another case, we had a, a a, uh, an, uh, a, sorry, <clears throat> a, a rider who is visually impaired, and it was her lifetime dream uh, not too long ago to see Garth Brooks, uh, not see him, but hear him, obviously. This is a really big thing for her. Uh, and this operator uh, went out of his way to take up a collection from a number of us, uh, and we were able to send her on a, an all-expenses-paid trip to see Garth Brooks in Billings. So That was really nice. I wish uh, Mountain Light would uh, send me on an all-expense-paid trip. Anyways, <laughs> I mean, that's just, like, really cool.
for sure. Um, like, uh, yeah. So you know, you you know, thank your uh, folks, um, the bus transit folks as well. It, it, they don't have to work for Mountain Line. They could be for beach transportation. Just a lot of the folks. Van Pool. That's a, just another one just off the top of my head. Yeah, there's just a lot of... Every time you get on a Mountain Line bus, it's a all-expenses-paid trip. Yeah? Across town? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyways, uh, the city uh, dove into the Mo- Missoula Water Utility or- um, Code. Um, sorry, I put down an ordinance. It's not, a, it's not an ordinance. It's the municipal code. And as you probably saw in the lower third of while that guy was talking about, something completely different th- from what you saw in the lower third. Um, just wanted you guys to know that uh, they're extending the code for de- delinquencies on the main. So the main is what properties owners own. It's the main that connects to the water system. And if there's a problem with it, they have the permission to kind of like shut it off because otherwise it could cause some reprehensible damage to not only your house, but your neighbors. And so um, one of the things they talked about is they're extending the amount of time to uh, have this, have your main dealt with, or they will go in and deal with it themselves. And they have the right to do so within this code. And that's kind of what they want to clarify. But also, they are all having an extension. So here's Dennis Bowman, the director of, uh, or the president. Uh, it's not necessarily the president because he's uh, p- through the city municipality. So he's kind of like a director of the Missoula Water Utility. Speaks in terms of time frames of how much time you have to uh, basically repair and replace your main. That they're trying to work on it because there is some times during the year contractors aren't available. As long as they communicate with us, we can give them. And the contractor says they can't get there for two more weeks, and it's the 15th day, we will definitely work with them. All right. So basically what that, what that means is that if you, uh, on the 21st day of said um, um, water main issue, you could call them up and be like, hey, uh, I have a contractor. Boom. It's all settled. It just basically means about communication. You have 21 days to actually do something, which means just picking up your phone and calling a contractor. That's all. Like, they're giving you 21 days. But if you honestly don't do it, they'll do it for you, but you might, you'll incur any of the costs that the Montana uh, Water Utility will do. And also, it's really cool because they also would set up, help you, either you pay it all at once, or you pay to, uh, set up a pay schedule to help replace the water main. And just so you guys know, a lot of the piping in the city of Missoula is old and needs to be replaced systematically. So um, according to uh, a last meeting that I uh, uh, mess- uh, talked about when they did an update on the water main and uh, like replacing a lot of the water mains over the years, it seems like the, they'll replace all the water mains in 100 years. Yep. Sick. Yep. In 100 years, all the water mains will be completely replaced. And I'll be dead. Yep. We'll all be gone. <laughs> So that's like, that was like the plan. It was like a 100-year plan to just like replace a mile of pipe every year. Yeah. And that's just it. And that's what they have to do. And I mean, like there's a water leakage system. So it's like they always have a, like a list of things they have to do. And then it's like priority. Since there's so much piping, a lot of times they don't know where the leaks are. And there's just, but they know that there's a lot of water being leaked in general because it, based on the pumps. All right. So that's kind of what I... I uh, had to say for uh, the city council meeting, and also uh, Hoagieville. Uh, there was a little, t- th- th- a little taste of Hoagieville because they're closing up their shop off of Higgins, and there was a uh, kind of like a, uh, a plan of how they're going to basically how you're going to enter the uh, the new tavern because they got an ex- um, a tavern exemption kind of deal, and basically uh, they're going to be opening a tap room, restaurant, tavern, and whatnot. What started off as like a tavern, people were just like, oh, it's just going to be another bar. And then it turns out, you know, like they kind of spoke about this. is like, actually, we want this more to be like a restaurant, kind of like a, mm-hmm. a better place where you can sit down, maybe have a pint, but you also have the option to have... Hoagieville, huh? Yep. Yeah, but it's, not, it's the owners of Hoagieville in Missoula who own this property who are opening a tavern. So it's oh. going to be kind of like Hoagieville Tavern. And is so it going to be called Hoagieville? Nope. Oh, okay. It'll become called completely something else. I don't know if they have a name yet, but right now they're just talking about access. So, so far right now, they have three points of access. They have an alleyway, they have Livingston um, Street, and they also have Higgins. So they're going to close off a couple of those other places, and they're going to try to take down a barrier um, in the alleyway, which a couple people were kind of concerned that would be a problem because people just yeah. using the, uh, the uh, alleyway as a through street. Yeah. So a lot of times what they're going to be doing is they, there was a suggestion of just putting a speed bump. And um, it's better to have access because you want to be able to uh, have access for fire departments. And the fire department did approve, saying that that would be okay if they had a speed bump there. 
So that's kind of what they're going to be talking about. Um, let's see. Final action on Hokie Vale's new tavern deal will be on the 25th. So that's like that's when they'll decide whether or not uh, how the streets and access is going to be. And they had a, a representation of uh, Domino's Pizza there uh, saying that uh, was co was definitely concerned about the access points as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, and also uh, the city council members were in New Zealand just the last couple weeks um, when this uh, you know, like the thing went down. Yeah. But they're in Palmerston North New Zealand. We'll, New Zealand, which is nowhere near Christchurch, New Zealand, where the events took place of the 50 people who were killed uh, from the census violence. If you want to learn more about that, you could, you probably can look, uh, oh, anyways, if you want to learn more about city council, there's a lot of stuff going on. It was bouncing all over the place. I try to try to focus a little bit more, but you can watch the whole meeting yourself. It's about an hour long, a lot of interesting parts of it, but you can go on to ci.missoula.mt.us. All right, so I want to make a quick announcement about MCAT. So our Springflix camp is full. Uh, usually we kind of fill up, we kind of like cap it off at 12. We have 13 kids so far, so there's no exception for any more kids yeah. to join our uh, Springflix camp. It's going to be me, Neil, um, his younger sister, Bree, uh, um, showed interest in uh, being a part of it as well. So I think it would be a good opportunity. We might invite maybe you to come on down just to do like maybe like a demo type deal. That would be cool. Sure, yeah. Yep. And um, we movie stuff. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be it, like the whole idea is this is kind of kind of replace the amount of the time that you would spend in school. So it the drop off they have early drop off at eight thirty, and it I don't know why I'm advertising this because it's closed. Don't don't sign up. But our summer camps will be posted shortly on our uh, MCAT.org page. So you can go to MCAT.org for more information about everything MCAT. Um, let's see. But of course, if your kids, if you want your kids to do something, there's always our Saturday drop-ins, which happens every single Saturday, and it will go on even during spring break. So this Saturday and the following Saturday, we're going to be doing Saturday drop-ins, and it's ten dollars per kid, fifteen dollars per sibling. We just added that new thing because I basically copied and pasted from Ms. Mo Gymnastics. So, thanks. <laughs> Wait, so it goes up with siblings? Like yeah. So if you have uh, two siblings. It's fifteen dollars for one and two, and if you have three siblings, it's still fifteen dollars. So it's five dollars each. I see. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like seven fifty if you have like oh, two siblings, but they have okay, to be I between the ages of nine and thirteen. Uh, we had a couple of younger kids last weekend, and I was just kind of like, yeah, this isn't gonna do. Like we we've been exceptional, um, and of course they have siblings, and so the family is always nice to have. Like even if it's like a six year old, I think that's the youngest we have is a six year old. Yeah. And um, we haven't had any trouble with six-year-olds. Um, they have their older siblings to kind of help them out and whatnot, but I am always kind of concerned because she doesn't know how to read, so it, it, it kind of gets kind of awkward, especially when you're trying to help them, like, title their movie. So yeah. that's just another uh, step that we kind of go kind of of above and beyond for some kids that come to our Saturday drop-ins. So anyways, Saturday drop-ins every Saturday here at MCAT 500 North Higgins Suite 105. It's not directly on Higgins. It's actually basically off the Spruce Street in entrance. So, yeah. anyways. Green overhang. I just want to say um, some more social media. I usually don't like to. Pr I don't usually promote Wake Up Missoula, so I do want to promote this because it's definitely one of my favorite uh, thumbnails. Did you pick that? Thumbnail? No, it, it was an auto-generated thumbnail. It had nothing to do with me picking it. It was. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I spit for a second there. So yeah, I just love this thumbnail. Josh just yawning. See, if you freeze that long enough, maybe that will be the thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I they usually it's kind of like usually like if this is like the middle of the show, it'll probably show up as the yeah. thumbnail. Uh, a lot of times they get a lot of uh, footage of things that have been already shown on it uh, from the video, but I don't want to show the videos as my thumbnail. I want to show myself. Yeah. I want to see me. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just I yawn a lot during the show because it's early morning and like. And also the show is not that interesting. Anyway, so, so we're going to be talking <laughs> about events uh, later on in the show, but I'm going to throw it over to a brand new episode of Dub and Stuff. So I took uh, Superman, a cartoon from 1941, and I redubbed over it. But this time I actually kind of had, uh, I kind of shortened a whole episode, a whole 10 minute episode into a three, four minute deal. So uh, without further ado, here's Dub and Stuff. And then when we come back, we're going to talk, gonna talk about some events. Sweet. Everybody wants some, wants some chip. Welcome to Hotel California. Oh 
yeah! Oh, God. All right, that's enough stealing news from the radio. So this is what I want you guys to do. See this letter? It's a tip. We need to follow this because you need to beware. Strike at midnight? Oh, that's pretty crazy. Hey, um, Superman, do you think you can handle this? Suppose I can, Chief. Just because we don't have insurance doesn't mean you have to send Superman every single time. Well, uh, I'll get to the insurance thing. Just, uh, Lois, I'm getting really bored of saving your ass. Chief, don't worry. You do not have to buy insurance. <laughs> I'm Amelia Earhart, y'all! Hotel Cal. God, I can't remember that song. It really annoys me. It remind me to get groceries next time I leave this island. <laughs> what? Who knows I'm here? I thought I got away from those tax collectors. Ugh. Gotta walk all the way over here, check the monitor, see who's here. Uh, Alright. Let's see what we got here. Switch. Oh, uh, come on. There we go. Power. You know, the fourth and fifth time this gets less spectacular. Hey, Jafar! I need your help! Someone's here! <gasps> what the? <laughs> Wait a minute. They used the same animation twice! Ah, wait for me! Hello, is anyone there? Come on, just open up already. Whoa, where, I didn't see this coming. Ah, stop, stop, don't you know who I am? I'm Lois. Yeah, Wayne, I get it. <laughs> Clark will be, I mean, Superman will be here. Who cares? It's the same person. Ah, this has me too written all over it. Ha ha ha, now, Lois Lane, let's see if Superman can get past my giant laser. <laughs> yeah, he probably can. <laughs> Would you look at those butts? Oh wait, Los is probably in trouble. Ah, here I go again. Bum ba dum, ba da da ba ba bum ba dum, ba da ba 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 bum ba dum, ba da da ba ba bum ba dum, ba 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 ba. Hey Clark, could you get those papers to me later? Look out there, Clark. Ba da ba 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 ba. You might be wondering how I got here. I flew. Oh, jeez. I totally saw this coming. Uh, more power. More power. Blast him. Blast him. Oh, oh snap. Ha, ha, ha. Did I do that? Whoosh. Ha, <laughs> ha. We gotta stop meaning like this, Lois. That's not funny. No, my plans have failed again. Well, time to get out of here, Lois. And that's the story of how... I saved the day yet again just because Perry White was too cheap to put up for insurance. Ah, the interest rates are just too extreme. <laughs> and that's how Lois got credit for my story. Well, hey guys, welcome back, y'all. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about uh, some um, events that are happening. There's a lot of events, and these are like like educational events and whatnot. And so, um, just so you guys know, Tiny Tales is going to be at Empower Place, like always, every single Wednesday at 10.30. I always like to promote the Mozilla Food Bank because it offers a lot of good opportunities for people who are struggling, also low income, but also anybody who wants to learn about uh, some sweet, sweet cooking classes that are usually fairly cheap and very cost effective. I see a lot of range of people that go to the Mozilla Food Bank, so I don't even know why I mentioned low income. So. Anyone can go. It's great. Tiny Tales is a great way for your kid to learn, but also Mizzou Food Bank is just an awesome place since they got the new facility. And also maybe you can go bowling afterwards. Solid. No, I don't know. I probably shouldn't have said that. I, 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 this is like events is mostly just like commercial stuff, anyways. It's kind of almost impossible to talk about events without sounding too commercially. So I'm just gonna kind of go through this. Uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church is uh, buried in treasure for people with hoarding issues. So starting at 10 a.m. today, um, St. Paul Lutheran Church is. Uh, 
having people overcoming challenges, increasing motivation, reducing acquiring, so reducing requiring, so it's definitely an oxymoron suggestion, uh, prioritizing and celebrating choices. So a lot of times this is a good way for people to look at some of the stuff that they have and be like, you don't need a stack of newspapers, just so you know. Yeah. Um, that's why you have microfiche. I'm working on that a little bit too. Yeah. I have a bunch of old video games. And I have a bunch of old, um, you know, musical instruments and whatnot, so. You do? Well, not old. Uh, no, I'm not going <laughs> to give it away. I love them. Like, that's the yeah. one thing I definitely do collect is musical instruments. I got a Washburn guitar. Washburn guitars. Very nice. They're, they're, they're the uh, titular jazz guitar out oh, there. So right. it's acoustic, electric, and it sounds very, very delicious. Um, <laughs> I, and I got a lot of flutes and stuff that I kind of acquired over time. I got a traditional uh, A-keyed flute made of wood. I got it when I was in Portland. Oh, it sounds really good, but also I can't really play it that well. I got a mandolin that I don't play too, so yeah. I have to learn it, but I have a mandolin uh, reading book, and if, you know, if I put my mind to it, I can do it. Anyways, moving on. Hands-on science, slime, and oobleck. So you get to make some slime, get to make some oobleck, whatever that is. Oh. Explore polymers and non- Newtonians um, fluids as well as they experiment with slime and ubic at the discovery bench at the Spectrum Discovery Center. It's uh, 350 but if you're under three, you get in free. Ooblek. I should point out, I made that before. It's really cool. It's a non-Newtonian fluid. Oh. Where, like, if you compress it, if you squish it in your hand, it's it becomes solid. Oh. But if you let it sit, then it becomes liquid and, like, uh. pours out of your hand. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it's really fun. that's what's happening today. They have a new Discovery Bench every week, and they also have a sweet, sweet 3D printer that you can um, make some objects with as well. So Grabo and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center, starting around 1230-ish lunchtime. It's a good way to uh, destroy your opponents at Scra uh, Scrabble and or Bridge. Um, grandparents Raising a Children's Support Group, Southgate Mall Community Room. Are your grandparents that basically looks after your uh, children's kids because they have to work uh, maybe 60 hours a week at three different jobs? Well, from 1 to 2.30, uh, Grandparents Raising Children Support Group is a collaboration between MSU Extension Office, AARP of Montana, and Missoula Agent Services. It meets every third Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. at the mall. Mansfield Dialogue, Beyond the Cyber Hype, University of Montana does a lot of great talks and lectures, and MCAT usually does a lot of those, uh, records a lot of those uh, lectures as well. Global Networks Connecting Everyone and Everything enables threats of to national security from anywhere to anyone. No matter the, uh, the debate around cybersecurity is often blurred by an all-encompassing angst about an unknown threat that can attack from anywhere. What is behind the cyber hype and what do we know how to deal with the threats from cyberspace? And Dr. Eva uh, Maria Maggi, a uh, visiting assistant professor for the Department of Political Science at the University of Montana, will be speaking on this. Teen Artist Workshop, Missoula Art Museum, right after school at 4 p.m. Have you ever wondered about the difference between poetry and spoken word? Come find out with the spoken word artist, Nicole Dunn, winner of the Montana Book Festival Poetry Slam in 2017. Um, using writing and visual prompts, Nicole will uh, um, uh, demystify. Wow. That's the, that's the word of the day. Demystify. Oh, it's demystify. Demystify? Oh, sorry. The D-E de just threw me off. because less mystical. Right, because I, I, got, I got confused by the demi. Yeah. <laughs> demi stiffy. <laughs> yep. Anyways, the creative form of a self-expression called spoken word, often focused on subject matter, clo uh, uh, closest at hand, yeah. our own identity. Yeah. So Sweet. it's basically Poetry Slam. So Poetry Slam at Missouri means starting at 4 p.m. Um, it's 4 to 6 p.m. and it's all materials and snacks are provided. That's cool. Yeah. Free snacks. You get to hang out and do some Poetry Slam. Slam poetry. Yelling <laughs> words in a certain direction and order. Anyways. Bobo Johnson. Right. <laughs> I, I, I mean, honestly, Poetry Slam. If you want to know what Poetry Slam is all about, just watch 22 Jump Street. Highly recommend uh, that movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. Anyways. Predator feeding at Missoula Insectarium, they do it all the time. They're going to feed one of their hungry anthropods or bugs, all that wonderful things at uh, the Missoula, Insect uh, uh, Missoula Insectarium. You can go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org to find out more information. This is an educational uh, service about bugs. Um, helping kids manage their emotions. So this is part of the Lifelong Learning Center. Uh, how do you respond when your child is having a tantrum, whine, or just being plain rude? Get some tips on, how, on anger management for kids and how to learn to teach your kids some skills that will, laugh to li that will last a lifetime. There's no child care offered at school during class, so you can play other arrangements for child care. So this isn't for your child, this is for the adults with difficult children. 
Yeah. And this is happening from uh, 6 to 8 p.m. And they're going to be kicking off the sessions um, from – oh, it's, oh, that's weird because it's basically uh, – it, it basically mar marked March 20th to March 20th. But, of course, this is just session, session one. You can find out more information by going on to the Lifelong Learning Center. All right, 3D printing workshop. Missoula Public Library always had 3D printing workshop. And I always like to promote this because this is such an interesting and cool thing to do because they have a way to 3D scan you. So if you ever like go to the library and be like, 3D scan me, I want a print of myself, you can totally do that. And it looks yeah. so cool. It looks really nice if you do it. So the smaller the model, the more clear it looks. But if it's really big, it kind of looks like funky, like it's like a horrible 3D object. Because just the other day, we met up with a guy who loves 3D printing. And he does a lot of large sculptures, and he, it's a good way for him to like scan all, a lot of his uh, sculptures that he's done and keep uh, a basically 3D record of sculptures, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So 6.30 p.m. tonight at Missoula Public Library. It's a 3D printing workshop, and um, you know, six participants per workshop. You can register online through a link at missoulapubliclibrary.org. All right, and it happens from 6.30 to 7.30, just an hour. And the next day, they'll have uh, some open open hours at the maker's space. All right, so um, Pragida Sharma, New York School of Painters and Poets, Missoula Art Museum, is doing a lot of things apparently today. Um, Sharma provides an overview of the New York School of Painters and Poets as context for Philip Guston's painting Cigar from 1969. Sharma is a professor of English at the University of Montana and the founder of the conference Thinking Its Presence, Race, Creative Writing, uh, literary studies and art. So this is going to basically going to be voices in contemporary art lecture series. So it's going to be happening at 7 p.m. Myths and realities of housing costs in Missoula. Missoula Public Library is doing a uh, basically a lecture on housing and housing issues, myth and realities of housing. But this isn't a, a, a thing for you guys to go to to complain about your own housing problems. This is a way to kind of have an idea and a scope of myths and realities of housing costs in Missoula. So this happens from se 7 to 8.30 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. And that's it for your Wednesday. If you're interested in going out and about for your Wednesday night, they got some karaoke at the Dark Horse Ball. Ooh, geez, that was a... That was, like a, that was a brain fart right there. I was like, Buh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, karaoke at the Dark Horse Bar. Uh, Twiddle with special guest. Uh, Ia Terra at the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be a jam band playing. Um, and then they have more karaoke at the Badlander. Adventure Club is going to be electronica music at the Wilma tonight as well. So a couple things happening for your Wednesday. I do have an art clip. And then when we come back, we're going to go right into some music with Josh. Oh, sick. Yeah, totally, yeah. dude. I, I need to feature you because you're sitting at the piano. Yeah. yeah All right, yeah. so um, here is an art clip, and this is going to be at the Clay Studio until the end of this month. Thank you. 
Awesome. Thanks, Josh. No that was problem. Josh Cook on piano. Thanks. Nope. So Featuring Thursday is back. another day. Um, we don't do a morning show on Thursday, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Thursday events happening. YMCA does uh, things and stuff. Mm -hmm. And YMCA is doing the family fun time from 9 to 11.30 on Thursday. And so, yeah, you get to enjoy some family fun time. $22 for your whole family. Um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Missoula Gymnastics, and Rich Accurate Sports Center also have a bunch of indoor fun happening starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow as well as today and most other days. Um, just some indoor gymnastic fun as well. Lunch Club Art Meetup, Missoula Art Museum. Oh, so many things at Missoula Art Museum. They usually never do too much, but I've been noticing they've been posting a lot of MissoulaEvents.net. But again, uh, they got Lunch Club Art Meetup at the Missoula Art Museum starting at noon, and they're going to be doing this uh, monthly. Um, the next one is April 18th, and it's from 12 to 1 p.m. And you just hang out and basically talk about art with 30-minute uh, mini tours of the current art museum. Yap is also happening on Thursday. It's bookmaking. Bookmaking. Awesome. You're going to make your own books. Yeah. Isn't that great? Um, and it starts at 3 p.m. It's the Jewtown Arts Community Center. Yap is a camp. Students will learn to a variety of book binding techniques and create their very own artist books. They also explore how, to, uh, how contemporary artists use books in their practice and discover where the worlds of literature and visual arts meet in the handcrafted books as well. All right. So um, Lego Club, as always, 3.30 p.m. every day after school. Um, if you're under 12, you have to be accompanied by an adult. No exceptions. And that happens from 3.30 to 5 p.m. every single Thursday at the Missoula Public Library. Zero by 50, home resource. That's the thing I was talking about earlier. It's home resources yep. off of Russell. I knew I'd, I'd figure it out at some point, but luckily event is happening. Zero by 50, it's a community series. And they're talking about glass. Glass is the one thing in Missoula that does not get recycled by uh, anyone at all. There's like no uh, company recycling um, business out of Missoula that ever does kind of recycling. They did uh, a Target. You had a bin where you could put your glass in there, but, and they would transport it to somewhere else to deal with the glass, but the transportation cost just did not justify um, the amount of glass yeah. that they were able to use. And you don't get much, as much money for glass as you do for plastic, which is usually five cents a plastic bottle, but you have to go to Spokane for that kind of action. Yeah. All right, anyways, 10 Spoon Comedy Jam, if you like comedy. And it's for all ages, and it's going to be at 10 Spoon Vine, Vine Vineyard. Um, this is the first of hopefully many 10 Spoon Comedy Nights featuring Zach Jarvis, Sarah Ashwell, Lenny Peppers, and Nathan St. Ong. Uh, several of these people uh, uh, competed in the Spoken Word Showdown last year, and they're excited to have them back for some laughs. So it's got a 10 Spoon Winery. It op doors open at 6 p.m., and the show starts at 7 p.m. Have you ever been to Ten Spoon Winery? Never. It's I basically, um, it's a farm. Oh, okay. It's a vineyard. You have a nice, cool building, a really cool building, and then beautiful open land. You go up, uh, you just go up a little bit past, you go up past the Peas Farm. You, like, take a left on one of the roads, and you're basically there. It's a nice place. I've done a couple of shoots there for MCAT. It's, it's definitely worth checking out for sure. Yeah, it's cool. out of the way, but it is totally worth it if you get a chance to go there. And also, a very important thing is happening as well for, if you have a kid that's going to the, uh, school MCPS, they're talking about attendance boundaries. And this is an open house, and it's going to be at Russell Elementary at tomorrow night at 6, uh, 6 p.m. And it's the third open house. It's the third one. So they've been having a bunch of open houses to tell people, it's like, hey, guys, we want to know where a lot of you and your kids live so we can adjust the boundaries to help suit best of, so we don't have overcrowded schools. Makes sense, right? 
yeah. you know, you don't have too many kids. You don't have 30 kids. It's already like kind of a lot for teachers. It's like 30 kids for one teacher. That's a lot. That is and a lot. like any individual problems or anything like that, a lot of teachers just have this thing where they just like get out of the classroom and they just make you stay out there for like five, 10 minutes. It's like, you know, it's just yeah. disruption. You know, and it's 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 extremely hard because the teacher also has to kind of be a parent. So this is a good way for you to kind of help uh, mitigate and you know divide and conquer. That always seems to be the case with kids. If you have a big group of kids and do a lot of after-school programs, to divide and conquer always works out because, whew, every kid wants attention. Everybody, ki every kid wants to be heard, but they just don't want to be talked to. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's so weird. It's like it's like everyone wants to be heard. Oh crap, we're running out of time. We have about three minutes left in the show. I'm almost done. So uh, once on this island, Junior is going to be at MCT Center for Performing Arts. Um, basically, this is uh, part of the cold winter, and you know it's already starting to warm up, so it's kind of like interesting timing to put this on. Montana um, experiencing a, a tantalizing sunny dreams of warm tropical weathers, and they're going to do a play at Missoula Children's Theater is a delightful present once on, on this island, Junior. It's going to be happening um, from 21st to the 23rd at the MC Center for Performing Arts. Performance will be Thursday and Friday, March 21st and 22nd, 7 p.m., and they're going to have a 3 and 5 p.m. show on Saturday. Sweet. Yep, I always like to promote MCT, even if they didn't cast me in Newsies. Yeah, same. I'm not bitter. <laughs> Bear Bay Dance presents words. So basically, it's contemporary dance where they convey words through dance. And it's gonna. Uh, this is their last weekend. They did it last weekend. So I remember that I always did a shoot with Ron where we had two camera shoot for uh, word, and they usually do it in room 001 in the Part TV building or the Massacre Theater. Um, you're going to be at the University of Montana. And yeah, and that's that's it. That's your event. Sweet. Um, but I do want to talk about maybe like a couple late night events for Thursday. Oof. Wilma is doing Galactic. Uh, it's going to be Funk and Jazz. That's pretty cool. Th even the name Galactic is like, huh, yeah. maybe. And then it's terrible. Who knows? I don't know. It's, it, you know, it's subjective. Everyone has different tastes. Rocky Karaoke is also at the Dark Horse. Um, <laughs> you have a VFW secret show at uh, uh, VFW Old Beck. It's going to be miscellaneous Ooh. acoustic music. I, I bet it's just an um, open mic, and they just call it a secret show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a party volcano. They're doing a beach party at the Badlander. And most of these events are like 21 and up. So I usually, I like to talk about events that are for everybody. All right. So that's, uh, that's all you guys need to know about your events. Um, we're pretty much out of time. We have less than about a minute to go. So Sick. Josh, you want to play us out? Yep. All right. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I'm Ramp. <laughs>